And now, Fairfax Breakfast Club with your host, Basil Lemba. Hello, my name is Basil Lemba and welcome to the Fairfax Breakfast Club. This is a program in which we bring you practical networking concepts and all the valuable information you can use to truly expand your business. And we always start our program with the quote, and today quote, it's an alignment with the following networking basics. Networking versus selling. Any networking is better than no networking. That's being said, to network, you have to leave your house or office and make it to networking functions or other gatherings. This might seem rather obvious, but we believe it bears repeating. With us today, we have a very special guest, somebody who works at George Mason University. I'm going to let him introduce himself for a minute. For a minute. But his name is Gregory Woodyard, who is happen to be the supplier diversity manager at George Mason University. George, uh, welcome to our show. Well, thank you, Basil. <laughs> thank you. For, it's a pleasure to be here, and um, I salute you for having such a, a vibrant program, and I'm, I'm honored to be a part of it. Um, yeah, I, I'm Greg Woodyard, as you know, and um, I am the manager of George Mason University's Supplier Diversity Initiative. Um, it's an, an initiative that is a component of Executive Order Number 33, which was uh, created and, and signed off on by uh, Governor Kane back in 2006, mm -hmm. and it was designed to enhance business opportunities for small women and minority-owned businesses. 95% okay. um, of Virginia businesses are small. Mm -hmm. well, Within that context, that includes women and minority-owned businesses. Mm -hmm. um, most people know that um, one of the fastest growing groups are women-owned businesses, mm -hmm. and that um, the old concept of minority as being either African-American or Hispanic is an is a old 19th century model. Mm. Um, minorities make up maybe 80 or 90 groups right now um, from around the world. And Northern Virginia being such a, a uh, rapidly growing, diverse, um, and, and, and comfortable market mm -hmm. place, um, these groups really are moving in and, and just adding to the quality of life. Mm -hmm. So making sure that a university um, which is a state agency in, in terms of George Mason, mm -hmm. is making purchases that reflect that mm. is vital. Gotcha. An executive order was designed to make sure that that occurred. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, the executive order took um, several years to complete, and it actually encompasses two um, separate executive orders. Um, executive Order 29, which was um, done in 2002, which made the system for monitoring um, and reporting um, the spin a priority for the state, and to include EVA registration, which is an e-procurement mm -hmm. system that Virginia uses so that it can monitor mm -hmm. and, and, and really identify who we're spending our money with. Okay. Um, and then Executive Order 33, which was enhanced to make sure that agency representatives and agency heads were actually responsible to ensure that everything worked. Gotcha. Um, the, the, the Commonwealth of Virginia um, has a 40% discretionary threshold, which means that um, with regard to all the money that a university or state agency has within its power to spend in any way it would it likes, mm -hmm. and, and, and not any way, but to make sure that it, the, the op uh, operation of the entity works um, well, 40% mm -hmm. um, of that discretionary money m must be spent with small women and minority firms. Now, you know, uh, most agencies um, in the initial um, time of this um, contract agreement or executive order um, had much more difficulty than they do now because you had to go out and source these companies. Um, 
at that time in 2002 when this first began, it was said that almost 97% of all spend was done with large companies. Mm -hmm. So to then to drill down and find companies that could provide the same service, mm -hmm. but that were woman owned and minority owned and, and, and unknown mm -hmm. to everyone was a, a monumental task. Mm -hmm. um, over time, using um, the, the miracle of electronics mm -hmm. and, and, and different um, database systems, it has become a work in progress. It is, it, and we have actually, at George Mason, um, been able to meet and exceed that 40%. Oh, good. Um, in the last couple of years, we've seen a, a, a small decline and upward and, and, and downward trends simply because um, we were not given the same state funding and gotcha. basically everything went up. Mm -hmm. So it became much more difficult, but we still managed to, to meet our uh, contractual agreements. Okay. So it's, it's, a, it's a great thing right now for businesses. Excellent. Now I understand you did such a good job that the governor gave you um, uh, recognition, special recognition that uh, we can see right here. Yes, yes. Uh, actually, um, you know, I'm, I'm proud of a lot of things. Um, I'm, I'm a very passionate person, and I'm very, very um, happy that um, to be given this award. Mm -hmm. um, it was a um, Supplier Diversity Leader mm -hmm. of the Year Award. Mm -hmm. And um, there are 172 state agencies mm -hmm. with leaders in every one of them. Yes, so to be given such recognition, um, it just means that the team of which I'm a part of uh -huh. at George Mason uh -huh. is doing a, a great job sure. and doing a job that was seen, uh -huh. Uh -huh. not just in the dark, in the uh -huh. back, uh -huh. but it was recognized uh -huh. and given this award, which, you know, I, I'm just proud as I could be about it. Okay, good. Excellent. Right. So my next question to you and all the activities that you do, what would you consider, maybe this, uh, what would you consider <laughs> your biggest <laughs> success? <laughs> well, you know, um, it's a funny thing about awards. Mm -hmm. um, it's not easy to get the same award twice, mm -hmm. but it is um, on, um, on the, the person getting the award. It does say that you are doing something right. Mm -hmm. Um, in our case, uh, we're doing something right. Gotcha. Um, I'm, I'm the person out front, so I get to meet with the, um, the, the new companies. I get to help people um, register in EVA and show them the process. Mm -hmm. um, those that um, and, uh, are qualified to be a, a small or a woman-owned or minority-owned business is helping them through the certification process. Mm -hmm. And then getting them connected to those end users at the universities mm -hmm. that want to purchase those goods mm -hmm. or might want to hear about those goods. Gotcha. Um, it's amazing just um, how varied the products, goods, and services that business come up with. Mm -hmm. You know, um, right now we're, uh, we're, we're, we're looking at small um, cameras and small microphones um, and, and all of these things are, are, are really technological improvements that uh, someone out there designed, mm -hmm. someone built, someone financed mm -hmm. and, 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 and made available. Mm -hmm. And so it's really a true joy to learn about these things and then to pass that information on. Um, one of the, the, the greatest, um, I would say, uh, successes mm -hmm. is talking to a business who didn't know that this process existed, mm -hmm. but had viable products that, or services or goods that we, we would purchase, mm -hmm. walking them through the process, mm -hmm. watching the aha moments when they really start to understand mm -hmm. that not only is this out there, but it's valuable. Mm -hmm. okay. And then helping them to, to sell their, their products. Mm -hmm. So those, those are my everyday successes. Gotcha. Um, getting our end users to see the value. Because in, in any initiative, mm -hmm. whether it's be a, a breakfast club mm -hmm. or, a, or a supplier diversity initiative, mm -hmm. getting people to believe that it has a benefit to them mm -hmm. is the challenge. Mm -hmm. And seeing that happen day after day, week after week, people um, emailing me and saying, um, I want to purchase this. Do you know any um, SWAM vendors? Mm -hmm. 
those are successes that I take to heart. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I do whatever I can to make sure that I can find them if possible. But in, in any system, especially this one, there are those goods, services, that a very small group of people know how to do well. Mm -hmm. And sometimes those are the biggest challenges, and, and I know we're talking about successes, but we don't necessarily have a, vi a, a, a vibrant group of SWAM vendors, and SWAM is an acronym for Small Women and Minority, mm -hmm. um, to call from. Um, so in those cases, we go to the, the larger companies, the more traditional companies, and we do that because even though we have a 40% discretionary mm -hmm. um, threshold, that still leaves 60% mm -hmm. for the larger, more connected, mm -hmm. bigger businesses. Mm -hmm. So any way you look at it, as long as we can give our end users, and end users are the professors and the staff um, who, and the, from the various departments and schools in George Mason, those things that they require to do their jobs well mm -hmm. at a reasonable mm -hmm. cost, mm -hmm. then we're all happy. Okay. Now, from what I'm hearing from you, uh, getting people to register to become a SWAM is not, you need more people registering to be a SWAM. So you Absolutely. have them, categories and what have you? Well, there's actually two parts to this. One is EVA, which is E-Virginia, and it's an electronic procurement tool. Mm -hmm. um, one of the, the difficulties of the 20th century was paper. You had to find the form, mm -hmm. fill it out, mm -hmm. get it to the right person. Mm -hmm. They had to file it. Mm -hmm. EVA allows a total procurement electronically done. It allows people who necessarily need to, to request it to be able to request it electronically. Those people who need to be able to approve the funds, to approve the funds uh, electronically, mm -hmm. to be, and they can be sent in any level of detail to the vendor so that they know exactly what, we're, what we want and what the requirements of it mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. And all of this can be done in a 24-hour time frame mm -hmm. because it's electronic. Mm -hmm. So EVA is a requirement because it allows us on our side um, to be able to input the information and get it to the vendor. Mm -hmm. On the Commonwealth side, they get to see the spin. They get to register it. They get to see where their money is going. Gotcha. Um, then Aside from that, and I, I commonly tell people, if you don't register in EVA, then we can't pay you. <laughs> so that's the biggest motivation. We'd love to do business with you, but if, if you don't register, we can't pay you. <laughs> you can work for us, but you we can won't work pay for you. us, right? But you can't pay you. So that that works out pretty well. Okay. On the other side, um, and it's it's a little more of a challenge, is the SWAM certification. Mm -hmm. Um, the certification agency is the Department of Minority Business Enterprise. Mm. And a 20th century model is, well, let's say I'm, uh, I'm an Irish owner of a small business. Mm -hmm. Why would I want to register? Because Irish is not a minority. I gotcha. With a, a company with that title. Mm -hmm. Well, it was designed to ensure that any group that wasn't getting business would. So in that regard, the initial idea for the name had to do with the underrepresented. And so rather than saying the Department of Upper, uh, Underrepresented <laughs> Business Enterprise. <laughs> Not very PR. No, no. <laughs> Using the word minority um, and then identifying the groups as small, mm -hmm. which just means that you have less than 250 employees mm -hmm. in your regular permanent employee. Gotcha. Women owned, which means you are 51% owner mm -hmm. is a woman, mm -hmm. and they oversee the daily operations, or a minority with the same designation. Gotcha. And in certifying a business, it the benefit is there is a particular website or database mm -hmm. that all state agency buyers are required to utilize mm -hmm. when going out and sourcing um, vendors. And your name is then placed in your business and your, your commodity code is placed in that database. Mm -hmm. And so if you sell light bulbs and we need light bulbs, you will get an electronic email saying that we need light bulbs. Gotcha. Respond to us. Mm -hmm. It's the same as if uh, you build, paint, um, sell paper. 
um, all of those things. Uh -huh. Now, in that, there's also um, certain mandatory spend requirements uh -huh. that we all have to, um, and it's, this is all to add to the vibrancy of Virginia. One of them has to do with, with furniture purchases. The Department of Corrections in Virginia creates and, and builds furniture. Uh -huh. So state agencies are required, unless they're, they're, the specificity of the, the, the furniture is something above their abilities, uh -huh. are required to buy from them. Uh -huh. That adds to the vibrancy of, of that agency. Uh -huh. It adds to the, the employ of Virginia businesses, and it provides what we need. Because uh -huh. in many cases, um, it's not a, an exact science when you just build a chair that's going to go in a classroom uh -huh. or a desk. Uh -huh. um, so in those cases, we have these mandatory requirements. Other than that, we go out and seek bids uh -huh. from the public sector, uh -huh. the private, and, and businesses respond to them. Uh -huh. So now, to get back to the example you're talking about the Irish, so does that mean that this Irish guy you mentioned and should sign up for the SWAM then, get a certification? 100%. 100%. So basically, the name SWAM now is kind of like turned into not necessarily the best naming. So should it be changed then? Well, actually, it is because, see, a, a business that's the, a small is any business. Now, when you talk well, about the department... Less than 250 employees. Right. But the owner is anyone. No, I got you. I guess uh, when you hear SWAM, I doubt that an Irish guy sitting there, when he hear the definition of it, small oh, I minority, see. I don't think that he thinks, unless you tell him, by small, we mean less than 250 employees. Because when you have, I think, majority and the woman, when you have those two there, most people mentally checked out. I, I, think. I agree. Um, I sort of overlooked your question simply because it's one of those things that we talk about so often. Mm -hmm. um, especially um, up here in Fairfax, it's an easier communication because there's so much diversity. Mm -hmm. um, when you're in south of Richmond, you're in, in you're Blacksville, when you're out in um, um, Harrisonburg, um, where the, the, the amount of minority businesses aren't as great as others, mm -hmm. The conversation can and has been a, a much more challenging conversation. Mm -hmm. um, because the effort and the reason by the effort was a pure one. Mm -hmm. um, it, and, and let me give you a little um, um, background. Um, in 2002, the governor received a disparity report from a, a consultant mm -hmm. that basically said uh, they had chronicled all agency spin across the Commonwealth mm -hmm. and found that 97, almost 97 and a half percent of all the spin that the Commonwealth did mm -hmm. with businesses was done with large firms, mm -hmm. leaving out mm -hmm. uh, small um, firms, leaving out women firms, leaving out minority firms. Mm -hmm. And you all, we all know that um, right now Virginia is the best place in the United States to do business. Mm -hmm. There was no way to continue in that marketing campaign mm. with this being present. Gotcha. So all of this was initiated to create a fair and, 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 and um, sort of platform in which to work from uh -huh. and to monitor, to detailed monitor how and who we spend our money with. Gotcha. So the, the name was, was sort of uh, chiseled out of that uh -huh. because uh, the statistics talked about the number of women-owned businesses or the lack of women-owned business participation and the lack of minority-owned business participation as a function of how many women-owned companies exist in Virginia and how many minority-owned companies exist. Mm -hmm. So it was a challenge to come up with a name. This was a, a straightforward and I think a very comprehensive and clear approach to uh, the problem at present, uh -huh. that we had to find a way to make a much more uh, vibrant and much more fair uh -huh. way of doing business, especially with women and minority-owned businesses. Okay. Okay. But you had yeah. to take into effect that we, we want fair to include everyone. Sure, I totally understand. No, the, the statistics are there if 97% goes somewhere, I mean, not much is going to the small business, so it makes sense that something be done. Right. Now, one question I want to make sure I ask you is, what advice would you give to small businesses? I know you get around, you're on the board of the Asian Chamber of Commerce, and uh, 
uh, well, I believe also the Northern, the, the Black, Black Chamber of Commerce. Yes, Chamber Northern Virginia, the Black Chamber of Commerce. Yes, so very much dealing with businesses on a face-to-face -face basis as well as on your uh, post as uh, a GMU. So what advice would you give to small businesses then? Well, you know, um, it's funny to sit here with you and you ask that question simply because the answer is to learn. And the, the way to learn is through networking. Um, one of the things that I tell people every week is that businesses fail more from the fact that they spend all their time working in their business mm -hmm. and very little time working on their business. Mm -hmm. So new trends, better ways of doing things, the use of the internet to, to promote your business as well as to run your business are new technologies that aren't just for certain businesses. Mm -hmm. So the thing that I tell people all the time is in the 20th century, your address was out in front of your, your building. Mm -hmm. In the 21st century, your address mm -hmm. is your website. That's true. If you don't have a website, then we can't find you. Mm -hmm. The emails that we send you to tell us that we have some opportunities for you, if you're not at least um, you have a working knowledge of your computer, mm -hmm. and you, you, you take some time every day and look at your incoming mail, mm -hmm. and, and, can, and, res and you respond to, to requests, then you're going to miss out on a lot of opportunities mm -hmm. that are going to go to your competitor, mm -hmm. simply because you chose not to answer your email. Mm -hmm. So I tell people to, to make sure that they add the, the internet portion mm -hmm. into their, their business profile. Mm -hmm. Another thing is to to, to go out and, and, and talk with people and find out from your competitors as well as those people who, who do business from a, in a different sector. How are they do, conducting business? Who are they sourcing to find out who has opportunities available? Mm -hmm. to, to, to get a, a, a file and, and get um, newsletters from different agencies mm -hmm. and read them. Mm -hmm. um, to, to know exactly what you sell and be able to give a 30-second so-called elevator response mm -hmm. that's clear, comprehensive, mm -hmm. and definitive so that if you meet somebody and you never know who has what available and who, mm -hmm. what opportunities avail you, mm -hmm. that you can showcase your company in 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. um, to find out what your competitors are charging for the same things that you sell. Mm -hmm. to, to understand what your margins are. Um, when you go into a negotiation, there's always a, a point where someone says, well, can you go lower? And sometimes you can and sometimes you can't. Mm -hmm. Not knowing is a mm -hmm. recipe for, for failure. That's right. Um, so those are things that I, 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 I talk to vendors um, about. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, depending on what they sell, I guess the discussion would go in different realms. Sure. Um, I've had the opportunity of being on their side by starting up companies myself. Mm -hmm. um, nothing large, but w if you own your own business, there is really not much difference between a small and large business with regard to how much of your time you're going to spend running it. <laughs> so from, from the time you get up till the time you go to sleep, you're going to spend most of your waking hours trying to make this thing work. Mm -hmm. So seeing that and feeling the, the, sometimes the stress and not knowing how to connect, finding somebody who wants to buy it at a particular location, getting to the right person, mm -hmm. um, that gives me a lot of pleasure being where I'm at because I know that. And I know that fear and I know that hollowness that sometimes vendors have. Mm -hmm. So being able to give them the information that they want in a, in a comprehensive way, mm -hmm. as well as leads to how to make what they're trying to do get to the hands of somebody who would really want to buy it, mm -hmm. that's, that's, uh, that's a joy. Mm -hmm. And so those kinds of pieces of advice, um, something that you do quite well, show up. Mm -hmm. You have to show up. You can't say you're going to network and always be too busy mm -hmm. and thrive. The, the, the equation just doesn't go together. You have to donate some of your time to going out and finding new business. Mm -hmm. And you have to 
follow up with people when they respond to you. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Absolutely. So that's the, that's the kind of information I get. Okay. Well, that's definitely a good insight. And I'm glad we had you as a guest because uh, you get to give the people the administrative side of things. Because most people, as I say, they work on their business, but they don't necessarily know what is out there, what are the different opportunities. And it's good for them to know that there's a place for them to go and get business. There are opportunities there. And mainly in this economy, it will be smart for somebody to look into the state agency like you to do business as well. And I do believe that one of the biggest challenges is that uh, people want to do business with the government, but uh, they might not necessarily know where to go, who to go, and what have you. So you guys can now contact Greg. As, uh, you can see his name there and his information. Uh, you can find him easily on George Mason University, so he can help you. We're really glad to have you today as, uh, as an audience. I hope you learned a lot, and I think I did. So on Absolutely. That note, definitely. And, uh, and on that note, I would like to say uh, Happy New Year, and looking forward to seeing you soon. Thank you very much.